Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization 6 Tips, where today we're going to be talking about expanding our empires and settling cities past just our first capital. Um, so, whenever we talk about, you know, expanding our empires, obviously the first choice that we're going to go to is, well, we're going to be talking about settling our second city, because our second city is obviously going to come right after our first, no duh. Um, so whenever I look to settle my second city, I, I really look for a lot of the things that I look for in a capital, because if, if you ask me, I think that your second and third cities are also very, very important, much like your capital. After your third city or so, they the location of cities and just where you settle them, and oh, I guess that's redundant, but uh, the location of cities gets a lot less important. Really, you're just going to be playing off of district adjacency, but for your second and third city, uh, the location is quite important. So there are a few things that, uh, that I normally like to look for whenever I settle my second and third cities. Um, so one of those things is district adjacency, and that's a, that was a big, a big proponent in having me settle this city where it is in this game. So in this game, you can see that there is an amazing spot for our campus right here because this would be a plus seven campus, as we talked about in the last video about. Uh, building our first districts, this would be a very, very good campus spot. And this campus spot is so good that I would like to settle a city here so that way I can get that campus down early and get a huge boost to my science per turn early on in the game. So be looking out for district adjacency, and that, that really is a driving factor in a lot of your extra cities. Just make sure that you're looking out for good district adjacency. Um, so since I'm playing the Netherlands, you know, I'll be looking for a lot of rivers because I get extra adjacency from rivers. Uh, you'll be looking for mountains for your holy sites and campuses. You'll be looking for rivers for your commercial hubs and hills for your industrial zones. And then theater squares are really, you have to build your own adjacencies for those uh, for the most part. And then harbors as well, you're looking for sea, sea, uh, sea resources and such things like that. Um, so yeah, so district adjacency bonuses are very important. Um, normally this isn't the driving factor with my second city, but just because of how good this one is in this game, um, this was a very big driving factor. Um, the other really big thing that you want to look out for is good tile yields. So good tile yields are normally the, 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 the driving factor for my second city, unless uh, of course I have, you know, an outstanding case like this where the district is so good. So tile yields are very important, so making sure I have a lot of 2-2 two -two tiles around, um, just to, so that way it's very easy to get a lot of food, a lot of production early on, um, that can help me produce more units, maybe I can produce some builders, some military units, all fairly quickly in my second city, um, so tile yields are very important, so be looking for a lot of hills, be, uh, be looking for, you know, uh, some resources that may provide additional yields, um, and resources are honestly another reason to settle on their own, um, because, like, for instance, settling this city here, gain, uh, got me access to horses, which I otherwise would not have in my capital. So getting these horses may allow me to build some some mounted units that I can then use to maybe attack Germany or something like that. Um, so resources are definitely another thing that you want to look out for when you are settling your second city. Now when it comes to your third city, uh, once again you're pretty much looking for the exact same thing as your second. You're looking for good tile yields, good district adjacency, and fresh water as well. Um, it should be noted that with your second and third cities, unlike your capital, it's not that important as to what uh, tile the city is settled on, just because the the other cities aren't going to be, they're not going to be, you don't, you don't have to deal with the, the impact of the very early game with your second and third cities. So having one additional production on the tile that the city is on isn't going to make too much of a difference. Obviously, it always is a nice thing to settle on a 2-2 tile as opposed to a 2-1, um, but it's not going to be that important, so don't prioritize that with, the, with your, your cities outside of your capital. But for your third city, as I mentioned, you know, you'll be looking for the same things. District adjacency bonuses, uh, good tile yields, and also some more resources, and just land as a whole. So, in this game, I would probably settle my third city, uh, maybe right up here. Um, this would be a fairly decent spot, just because uh, I, there are a lot of rivers for a lot of district adjacency bonuses. Uh, I get cotton as a new resource, there's some sources of stone that I can put down mines. This, uh, this spot doesn't really have great tile yields, though, so that is something to consider. Oh, I guess I would get deer as well. Um, but that is one thing to consider, is that if I, if I were to settle here, I wouldn't get very much production, because this is almost entirely flat land, with the exception of, like, if I were to build quarries on these stone, or maybe a mine on that hill over there. So some other options for my, my third city would maybe be over here somewhere, where there, where there definitely are a lot more hills, so maybe, maybe right down here. Um, the, the negative with this area, though, is that there's no fresh water. We only have coastal water because, you know, there's no river, there's no lake, there's no oasis. Um, so we would have to deal with coastal water instead, which, as we know from our settler lens, coastal water provides two less housing than fresh water. 
Um, so that is one thing that would be a little bit bad, so I'm not really sure which one I would choose here. Um, I, I honestly could go anywhere along this river as well. I could even go maybe down here to get this Natural Wonder, because Natural Wonders also can be very helpful for tile yields. Uh, that would be really close to Russia, though, and that probably wouldn't work out. But yeah, that would be a bad idea with loyalty. Um, so I probably would not do that, but for my third city, I would either go here or here. Um, neither one of these spots really has particularly good district adjacency. This one is really bad for district adjacency just because there's, there's really nothing around to get district adjacency. Up here, though, at least we do have rivers, and since we are playing as the Netherlands, that could be very helpful. Um, we could get some nice commercial hubs, maybe a campus or two, because we have uh, we have at least a few mountains and maybe even a harbor as well, depending on what's all over here. So that's what I would do for my second and third cities. And now I'm going to switch over to a game that I recently played, and we're going to talk about expanding past our, our second and third cities as well. So right here I have a game as Pericles that I played on stream a little bit ago. It was a pretty fun game, went pretty long, but I did end up losing for reasons we'll actually talk about here in just a little bit. Uh, so with this game, I just like to analyze why I settled my cities where I did, and just the, the kind of the thought process that went behind them, and also talk about settling cities beyond our second and third. So to start off here, my second city this game, I believe, was Corinth. And the reason I settled Corinth where I did is just because it had the the it had very good tile yields around it, not to mention it had some luxuries as well. So Corinth has a lot of mountains, or not mountains, it had a lot of hill tiles around here, so that means a lot of production. You can see there's hills here, 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 um, and here, and here, and just a, a lot of production to be had in Corinth. There was also a decent amount of flat land that I could get for some farms. Uh, it had some resources as well. It had olives over here. It had tea, neither of which I had in my capital. So um, by settling Corinth here, I was able to get it on a source of fresh water, so very good. I was able to get good tile yields also very good and I was able to get two additional luxuries as well also very good um, the one thing with Corinth's the location though is that it doesn't really have uh, good district adjacency bonuses by itself um, but I was able to miti mitigate this a little bit by planning districts around in a nice hexagon around the government plaza and that's something that we'll talk about in a later video about planning our districts out uh, just further into the game and thinking forward um, but overall, Corinth was a very, it was a pretty good second city spot just because we got good yields, um, we were able to get more resources, and I, I was also able to get a little bit of land for some seaside resorts later in the game, which is something to consider if you are planning on going for a cultural victory. So for your seaside resorts, you want to be looking out for flat land tiles on the coast, and then you could worry about the appeal a lot later. Um, but that is something to keep in mind if you are planning on going for a culture victory. So my third city this game, I believe, I'm not sure if it was, I think, I believe it was Argos was my third city this game. Um, and the reason that I settled Argos where I did is not because of yields or district adjacency, because honestly, Argos is pretty bad in both yields and district adjacency. Um, so there's really no hills for production, so this would be a very, very slow city to produce things. Um, there is lots of flat land for farms, but without production, that doesn't really mean too much. And there's a lot of coastal dead tiles as well. But the really big reason that I settled Argos, and you can probably see why right here, is because of these seaside resort locations. So Argos has a lot of tiles that are flat land and on the coast, and they have some like this that are really good on appeal, so I was able to get just a lot of seaside resorts down. And since I was planning on going culture, culture victory from pretty much the start of the game, uh, settling Argos was a very important thing for me because I wanted to make sure that I secured this land for these uh, seaside resorts because these are all producing probably probably at least a collective 100 tourism considering uh, computers and the fact that I have Cristo Redentor as well. So Argos was pretty much uh, settled solely on the value of these seaside resorts and honestly that's not a terrible thing to do in a game. Um, so after we settle our second and third cities, we're obviously just going to be expanding. Um, as far as how many cities you could get, uh, that really is up to you, honestly, and uh, just the conditions of the game. So I would recommend no less than probably six cities, because if you have less than six cities, you are going to run into some troubles. Uh, you can really expand as long as you want to, or for as much as you want to, just because there is no downside, unlike Civ 5. Uh, because in Civ 5, you know, your text would get more expensive and so would your civics, but that is not the case in Civ 6. The only thing that gets more uh, expensive, I believe, is the production cost of districts. So, really, you are free to expand as much as you'd like, as long as you have the amenities to support it as well. So, I would say definitely get at least 6 or 7 cities. I would highly recommend 7 over 6, um, but past that, try to settle as much as you can. 
And the reason for that is just because more cities means more districts because each city, you know, you can build one campus in each city. So if you have 20 cities, you can build 20 campuses. But if you only have six cities, you can only build six campuses. Um, and this is honestly the reason why I lost this game um, because I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had nine cities. I think I count all those, right? Uh, not nine or ten cities, if I can count right. And look at how many cities Montezuma has. He has just a ridiculous amount of cities. He has far more than me. And if we take a look at the yield screen over here, we can see that he was able to get almost 500 science per turn. He was able to get over 500 culture per turn. Um, I'm sure, yeah, he had, he had almost 300 uh, faith per turn. And these are things that he wasn't even focusing on because he was going for domination victory. Um, he did eventually win a science victory, but... But he was just, he was taking all the land. So settling more cities is very important and you honestly want to try to expand as much as you can because having this many cities means that you can get a lot of districts, which means you can get a lot of yields as well. So I would definitely recommend expanding as much as you can. Um, but the purpose of cities past your, your second and third city is really just to secure good di uh, district adjacency and to, to secure land as well and to stop other people from expanding. Um, so, for instance here, if I take a look at Nosos, I believe I settled Nosos fairly early on just because I wanted to stop Germany from expanding. Uh, Germany was over here, but obviously they're not any longer. Um, but I didn't want Germany to expand towards me, so I settled Nosos so that way I would have, you know, some land of my own to kind of act as like a forefront against Germany expanding. Um, so that was one, that was a good reason for this. This also was a city that had fairly decent tile yields, quite a few hills, um, quite a few, um, farms as well and also a natural wonder so this was the eye of the sahara which is probably one of the worst natural wonders in the game uh, but but i did settle for it anyways uh, olympia down here i settled as the as the idea to get it a to be a petro city unfortunately that really didn't come to fruition so that that is one thing that you have to consider i wouldn't often recommend uh just settling a city solely for a wonder because if you don't get the wonder then the city ends up being pretty terrible especially if you go for a petro city because since i didn't get petro this city is it's pretty much just useless all that it serves to do is get me land and i guess get me like a source of aluminum but aside from that it really doesn't do very much um, so that is one thing to consider if you are planning on settling to build a wonder uh, that if you don't get that wonder try to make sure that you have a city that is at least still useful outside of that um, these other cities here were kind of just uh, settled to fill in the space between cities um, and as far as space between cities go I normally like to have either four or five tiles obviously uh, I think five is kind of my preferred so that would be like one two three four five um, one, two, three, oh, that one was only four. Um, but yeah, just try to get either four or five tiles away. I think if you start getting into like six and seven tiles away, then you might run into some loyalty issues. Um, and you can't really expand your borders too much, uh, because remember, you can work tiles up to three away. So really, you could go up to seven tiles away. But I wouldn't really recommend that because then you would have a big hole in your empire for a good while until your tiles are able to expand enough. Um, but yeah, normally five tiles is about what I aim for. So as I mentioned, you know, Sparta and whatever that city is, we're just kind of to fill in the spots of, of between these cities over here. So between these two and these two, um, and they overall, they're okay cities. Um, once you're past, you know, your, your third or fourth city, it is okay to settle cities that are really not really that great because for instance, this one doesn't really have much production to be had. It's got a lot of farmland. It's got some decent resources, but it really doesn't contribute all too much just because it has just about no district adjacency spots, has no production to be had, and really it's just not that great. Um, but I did settle it anyways just to secure the land. Uh, Kumasi up here I actually got uh, through loyalty because Germany had took them and then lost them to loyalty and then I ended up getting them so I just kind of kept the city. Um, but the city actually did serve a good purpose because I was able to get a pretty decent campus spot over here. I was able to get a plus three campus. Um, it was on freshwater as well and it did have a little, uh, it had at least a little bit of production. So overall this was a fairly decent city and this city up here was once again just kind of one of those, uh, those space securing cities and I wanted to make sure I had a lot of space in between here to go for some national parks parks and I believe later in this game I did get more than just one national park here um, but that is another uh, another valid reason to settle a city 
So now I'd like to just go back over what we talked about this episode and reiterate some of the main points. So um, first off with your second and third cities, your second and third cities you're going to try to settle in a very similar fashion to your capital. So you're going to be looking for very good yields around the city, you're going to be looking for possible district adjacency bonuses, and you're going to be looking for more resources as well. So like with this city, I was able to get very good yields with all these hills and a little bit of flat land for some growth as well, and I was able to eventually plan out some good district adjacency by grouping districts together. This city down here doesn't have the greatest yields, but it does have something very valuable, and that is a lot of coastline for seaside resorts, so that was part of my win condition this game, was to get a lot of seaside resorts, and this city was very helpful towards that, so these two cities kind of acted as mini capitals for trying to push me towards a victory condition. Uh, past your third city, though, you really just want to be securing land and looking for good district adjacency bonuses. So securing land is very important just because the more cities you can get, the better off you'll be because more cities means more districts, which means more yields as a whole. Um, so these cities over here were, try were used to try to get Montezuma and Germany to stop expanding. Didn't work out too well this game, but, you know, sometimes that just happens. Um, and the other cities in between were just to kind of... Uh, like, claim the land and make sure that uh, I would be able to have the land for myself, that nobody would expand into the land, and that I would be able to get more districts out by having more cities. And with all of your cities, no matter if they're capitals or second or third cities or past that, you want to be looking for your fresh water as well. You want to try to make sure you have fresh water in every city. Um, coastal water is okay. It's not quite as good, but it still is pretty acceptable. And as you get later into the game, you can also settle for going for an aqueduct as well if you're not able to settle on fresh water. Um, so you have to be one tile away from a mountain or a source of fresh water, and then you can still effectively get a source of fresh water as well. So if there's one thing that you should take away from this video, it's that you should try to expand as much as you possibly can, just because expanding means that you take away land that other people would get, and it allows you to secure more districts and thus more yields as well. So make sure that in your next game, you just go see how many cities you can settle. Um, aim for that five to, uh, for five or six tiles in between, four, five, or six tiles in between, and you should be good to go. So thank you all for watching, I have been the Saxon Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.